Right guys, in this video, I am gonna teach you how you can turn your own signature into a logo or a watermark that you can put on your website or over your photographs and make yourself look really professional. We are going to do it in Photoshop, but you don't actually have to use Photoshop. You can use any imaging program where you can layer one picture on top of another. Now, one of our most popular videos is how to use signature fonts as logos and watermarks. And if that's something you're interested in doing, obviously go and check that video out. It's, uh, I'll put a link up here for you. But in the comments of that video, lots of people were saying, how do you turn your own signature into a watermark? And it's actually really easy. That's what we're gonna do right now. Now, firstly, you're gonna need a signature, obviously. So the first thing is use a thick black marker pen and do a signature on a piece of paper. Here's my version here. Nice and big. So a nice big signature, black pen, white paper. You scan that in using any scanner, scan it in at around 300 DPI, that will be absolutely fine. You save that and then you open it up in Photoshop and crop it just like what I've got here. And as you can see, I've turned my name to Mickey Mouse, all right? So I've just pretend, I've got a pretend signature here, Mickey Mouse, all right? And it's nicely cropped and it's black on white and that's it really. And now what we need to do is we need to turn this signature into what's called a PNG. So a PNG image allows you to have a transparent background, which is exactly what we want because we want our signature to be like this and we want the background to be transparent so we can drag and drop it and put it wherever we want, okay? So the first thing you want to do is actually turn this image into a grayscale image and basically you're telling Photoshop that you only wanna be working in blacks and whites really and that's exactly what we wanna do. So to do that, we're gonna go up to image, mode, grayscale. This box will come up that's saying, do you wanna discard the uh, color information? Yes, of course we do. So we just click discard. And now what we've got is a grayscale image and you can see that up here where it says gray slash eight. Now the next thing that we wanna do is give it a bit more contrast so that we've got as much black and whiteness as possible, okay? So for that, I'm gonna go up to image, adjustments here and brightness and contrast. And I'm just gonna whack that, oh, not the brightness, sorry. I'm gonna whack the contrast up to roughly about 80 odd. And there you go, you can see it's a lot more black. The, um, the actual text there is a lot more black. Let's go back to zero and there you go and up to about 80 and there you go it's a lot more blacker and that's what we want so i'm going to click ok and i'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it just a little not that much so that we can see it just a little bit better how about there that's it okay the next thing that i want to do is actually fill that text with black so to do that i'm going to go to what's called select color range and just select the color black so up here you've got select I'm gonna come down to color range. And then what you do is you will click on the color that you want Photoshop to select. And so for instance, if I click white, you can see what it's doing here. It's selecting all the white. And if I click black, it selects the black. And that's exactly what you want. Make sure that your fuzziness here is quite high. I've got mine set to around about 150 and that seems to work quite fine. And then you just click okay. And as you can see, what we've got now is a selection of just the text. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually smooth off my writing. Okay, I'm gonna make my writing a bit more smoother and a bit more curvier, right? Now, this is an optional uh, thing, actually. You don't have to do this. Um, but I think it looks really cool when you're turning signatures and script writing into you know, graphics like this. So to do that, we're gonna go up to select here and go down to select and mask. And your select and mask properties box will appear like this. Now you may not be viewing yours in black and white at this stage and that's not a problem. You go over to view here, you click on this drop down, and you select black and white. By default it's probably going to look something like that but actually it's much better to view this particular image in black and white. So view black and white, click on the arrow to get rid of it. Down here, you've got something called smooth. 
So I'm going to click on that smooth slider and I'll just drag it right the way up so you can see what's happening. I mean, look, it can really, really smooth out your text if you want it to. But I'm just going to smooth it out slightly, you know, because it was already quite um, scripty and quite flowy. So I'm just going to smooth it to around about 10, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that looks all right. That'll do it. And as you can see, I've got a slightly smoother script, which is exactly what I want. I'm now going to come down to Shift Edge and I'm going to move it up to around about plus five. And all that does is shift the edge, exactly what it says. And I'll just show you that. So if I slide it right the way up to 100, it's shifting the edge outwards. You know, it's making it uh, thicker. If I click on this and I go backwards, it's making your text uh, a lot thinner, you know. And that's not actually what I want. I'm just trying to expand the selection a little bit. So I'm going to shift the edge to about 5%. Now, it just depends on your handwriting whether this, the shift in the edge, is going to work or not. Just experiment to see. You might want to slide it a bit more or a bit less, you know. And the next thing we need to do is output to a selection. So down here it says output to. Selection is what you need to choose from this drop down list and you click OK. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that selection with black and then I'm going to turn it into a PNG. But before I show you how to do that, I want to take this opportunity to tell you about the courses that we run over at the school of photography.com. If you want to learn Photoshop properly, come over and see us. We've got a structured professional Photoshop course that will teach you Photoshop with ease. Plus we've got photography courses, Lightroom courses, anything photography related, and we've got thousands of students all over the world. Go and check our feedback out on Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, wherever you want to, all right? Uh, we've got thousands of happy, happy students. You know, we make learning easy. So come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com if you want to learn photography and if you want to learn Photoshop properly. Right, let's go back in and create this PNG. So to make this a PNG, we need a transparent background, like I said earlier. Now at this point, if I try to delete the background, it won't let me, and that is because the layer is locked. So to delete the background on an image, you need to make sure that the layer is unlocked and it's very easy to do. All you do is you click the lock symbol and it unlocks it, turns it from a background into a layer as you can see there. Okay, so now I've got an unlocked layer, I've got my text selected and now effectively, if I hit the backspace, it's gonna delete whatever's inside that selection. I don't want that deleted because what's inside this selection at the minute is the text that I actually want. So what you need to do is you need to go up to select and inverse. And as the name suggests, it's inverse that selection. And now effectively what I've got selected is the white. Then all you do is you hit the backspace on your keyboard, which is the key that you use you know, to delete words and whatever else. And there you go. We've now got a transparent background. Now next I wanna make my signature jet black. So I'm going to inverse the selection again because I've deleted the background now that bit's done. I'm going to inverse it again so I've got the text selected and then I'm going to fill that selection with black. Simple as that. So we go up to select inverse again and then you can press shift and F5 which is the shortcut key to fill or you go up to edit fill and then this box will pop up and you're going to select black from the contents here. Make sure your opacity is at 100. Make sure the mode is normal and this preserved transparency is unticked. And you click OK. And there you go. As you can see, it has now filled that area with black. And then quite simply, I'm just going to deselect it. Then I'll have my signature. All right. To do that, we're going to press Control and D together or Command and D if you're on a Mac. And here we have a lovely black smooth signature. Now nine times out of 10, that's gonna be fine. It all depends on how much ink your pen's got in it and stuff like that. But what you can see is at the end of my signature here, it kind of fades off a little bit and we've got a few little bits that 
are not as smooth and as not as nice as I would like. So the first thing that I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add a solid color underneath this just to check really, just to check to see if it's gonna look okay. To do that, I'm gonna come down to the adjustment layer icon here, click on it, I'm gonna to go to solid color, I'm gonna choose white, and then I'm gonna drag this color fill underneath this layer, and there we go. So now we can clearly see we've got black up against white like this. Now to me, um, this just needs tidying up a little bit. Just this section here, possibly this section here. Now that's really easy to tidy up. All you do is you bring your selection back and you paint in the selection. It's as simple as that really. So to get your selection back, what you need to do is hold down the control or the command key if you're on a Mac and you can see that little square comes up there on your cursor and then you click on this layer zero here and as you can see, your selection comes back. Make sure as well at this point that you are selected on the layer here and that is because you're painting on that layer. You're not painting on the solid color fill there. You're painting on this layer. Um, next thing is you select a black brush. So I'm just gonna click on this icon here to bring my uh, foreground and background color to black and white. So the foreground color is black. I'm gonna grab the brush tool. I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is on 100%, my flow's on 100%, and then I'm gonna come back down to here, and I'm gonna quite simply paint over these areas, and you can see it's just filled them in a little bit. And you can see that's doing a really good job. And it's as simple as that, really. Now, it's just a matter of going Control and Delete to delete the selection again, and that's it. That's looking like a really lovely, smooth signature. I can see that there's a little bit at the edge there that I don't want. So for that, I'm just gonna grab the eraser tool, and I'm just going to rub that out. Simple, really. So now what I've got is a lovely, smooth, solid black signature. You can leave it there if you want to, but you can also add other bits to it if you want to. Again, this is an extra, you don't have to do this bit. But for me, I think I'm gonna put photography in this area here. Again, it's something personal that you may do or you may not do, it's entirely up to you. So to do that, all I need to do is grab the text tool, come over to my image here, click on it roughly where I want it to be, and I'm gonna type in photography, just like that. Now, to adjust it, what you want to do is get up your character panel, which is this one here. Now, as you can see, I've already got it docked over in my workspace. If you can't see it, all you do is you go window and you go down to character and you make sure that it's ticked and it will pop up over here. Now you may have noticed that all of the letters that I typed there were in capitals and that's because I've already been practicing. That's this one here, that's all caps and I'll just show you, you need to select all of your text and then I can turn the all caps off or I can turn it on again, all right? So while it's selected, we can do all of our adjustments, okay? I quite like this font, Myriad Pro, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on that font there. Over here, the, the text size, I can make it bigger, obviously, and I can make it smaller. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna move it over to around about there and maybe a little bit bigger again. Move it over to there, that's too big. So let's type in manually now 25 and press enter. That looks about right to me and nope, maybe a little bit smaller than that, 24. There we go, just like that. Now the other thing that I like to do with this particular font, again it depends on what font you use, is I like to spread the spacing out. So for that we come over to this section here of the character panel and you can type in manually there, or you hover over this VA symbol, and you just go drag it left and right, and you get it to roughly how you want it to be. I think about there is nice, and I've also bolded it. And the reason I've bolded it is because my font here, my signature, is quite bold, and you want it to match. Well, I want it to match. Again, you do whatever you want, whatever preference that you want. So when you're happy with all of that, we're gonna click the tick at the top, and then I'm gonna grab the move tool, and I'm just gonna to move it around so I can get it roughly where I want it to be. 
and I think about there is good. Now I'm going to show you a really easy trick to change this to different colours because of course you may want a black one, a white one, a grey one, a pink one, whatever you want. All right. So let's show you a, a really good trick for that. All you need to do is select both of your layers here, which is obviously your signature and the text there. And you do that by holding down the control or command key and clicking on both of them. So you select both of them. I'm going to press control and G, that's command on a Mac. And then it creates a group here, group one. And if you want to be nice and neat and tidy like me, you double click on that and you type in text, press enter. And now what we've got is the text all in one group there. And as you can see, I'm hiding it and bringing it back. So while I've got nice black text, I might as well save my black version of a PNG. Okay, so let's go and do that. Now, like I said to you, a PNG has got a transparent background. So if I save this now as a PNG, I would have a white background, it's as simple as that. So all I do is I come and hide the background color fill layer, and then I've got a transparent background. So to save the PNG with a transparent background, it needs to have a transparent background, all right? That's very, very important. So make sure you hide that layer below, and then obviously all I've got now is text on a transparent background. I'm gonna go File, Save As. From the drop-down box here, I'm gonna select PNG, it's as simple as that. And then I'm gonna call this one Black Signature Logo, just like that, and then I click Save. This box will pop up, just select the large file size, that will do, I'm gonna click OK. And now let's open up the folder where I've got everything and there you can see it says Black Signature Logo PNG. There's my original scan, there's my crop scan, and that is my black logo PNG, okay? So now let's show you how easy it is to change the color of these PNGs, all right? Very simple. See this blank part here of this group? We double click on it, and up pops what's called the layer styles property box. I'm just gonna cancel that because you can also right click on your group and you can go to blending options at the top here and again, the layer style properties box will open up. Now all you need to do is go to color overlay, tick it, select the color overlay box here, and then here where it's got the color, you click on it, and of course you can select white uh, or mid gray, or black obviously, we've already got black. Uh, for now I'm gonna click select white, and I'll show you how to do the color one in a minute, and I'm just gonna click OK there like that, and I'm gonna click OK again, and now as you can see, I've got a white version. So I just need to save that. And again, it's File, Save As, Select PNG from your drop down. This time I'm gonna click on this black signature logo just so that I get the words here. And I'm gonna delete where it says black. And I'm quite simply gonna put white in and click Save. Click OK again there. Open up my folder. And now what you can see is I've got a white version and I've got a black version. It's as simple as that. Let's hide this box. So for most people, a black or a white one or a mid gray one is gonna be absolutely fine. But what if you do want a red or a purple one? Well, we've gotta turn this image back to RGB. If you remember when we was um, making our text all nice and solid and bold, we turned it to grayscale. So we need to turn the image back to RGB before we can change the color of it. So let's just do that. And you do that quite simply by going up to image mode and we're gonna change it back to RGB color. This box will pop up. We don't wanna merge it. You know, we still wanna keep our original layers just in case you wanna go back and change the text or whatever. So I'm gonna click don't merge. And now as you can see up the top here, it doesn't say uh, gray slash eight, it says RGB slash eight. And that means we can change it to different colors. So let's do that. I'm gonna come over to here to my effects again. I'm gonna double click on the effects. This box will pop up again. I'm gonna click on color overlay again. I'm gonna click on this box. And this time I'm gonna select, uh, let's go a bit wacky, shall we? Let's select a purple one. That'll do, click okay. Click OK again, 
and again, save this one as a PNG. File, save as, PNG from the drop down. Select one of these so I don't have to type it all in. And this time I'm just gonna put purple and then click save. Again, you want the large file size, I'm gonna click okay. So now what I've got here is three different versions. And again, you can make as many versions as you want, all right? So it's as simple as that. A good idea at this point is also to save it as a Photoshop file so that you can go back and work on it if you need to in the future. That's again, very easy. We're gonna go file, we're gonna go save as, and we're gonna just make sure that we've got Photoshop PSD save, uh, selected from the dropdown. And I'm just gonna call this signature logo. There we go. And just click okay there. And now the next bit is really simple. You just drag and drop these PNGs on top of any image you want. So I've got here a couple of pictures. I've got a colorful one here. And then I've got a muted color one. It's not quite black and white, but it's nearly black and white, okay? So let's open up that folder again. Here it is here. And for this black and white type of image, I think I'm gonna use the black signature, okay? Now this is important. You drag and drop from the folder here onto this image. You make sure that you've got nothing selected underneath, you're not using any tools, because that will stop this from happening. You quite simply grab it from the folder, make sure you're holding onto it. You pull it over the top of your image. You can see that there's a little plus symbol there, and then you release. And there we have our signature logo on top of our image. I can resize it if I want to. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go quite big actually. And let's put it down to about there. Click the tick at the top. And I've now got a signature on top of my image. Over here in my layers palette, I am gonna take the opacity down, I think to around about 80-ish. That'll do the job. Let's hide that and bring it back. Hide it and bring it back. And there you go. I've just signed my image digitally on Photoshop. For argument's sake now, let's go over to the colorful one, which is this one here. Open up my folder again. This time I'm gonna grab the white signature logo, drag it on top, move it down. Let's make it nice and big again. Put it in the middle. There we go, like that. Click the tick at the top. Lower the opacity to about 80 odd percent, somewhere like that. And there you go, so now I've got another version there and a black version there. And quite simply, you would now save that and what you've got is a signature saved on top of your picture. You can resize the image from here so that you can have a low res version, a high res version, etc. If you're clever enough, you can add that to a watermark in Lightroom and you can export batches of pictures at once with your signature watermark over the top. Now, of course, we teach you how to do that properly in our Lightroom course over at the schooloffotography.com. So uh, come over and check that out if you wanna learn how to do that. If this video has helped you out, you need to help us out, all right? It's like a trade-off and it's very easy for you to help us out hit that like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. That's all you need to do and it really helps us out. And also put in the comments what you think of this video. We love to hear from our audience. So I hope that helps you turn your own signature into a watermark or a logo for your company or website. And if you wanna learn photography properly, don't forget to come over to the schooloffotography.com where we specialize in that. I'll see you in the next video.